Look at this beautiful place. Okay, so behind us we have some rescued dairy calves and these are the lucky ones, but tomorrow we're going to a dairy farm to see the ones that are still suffering and still enslaved. Okay, so we're just out the front of a dairy farm here in Israel. We're, we're here to meet Tal Guboa and, we, and her boyfriend and we're going to do some documenting of the animals inside. So, it's up in how do we avoid it? Just put, I walk like this. Don't, time. don't be with the camera always like this. Okay. Yeah. okay? This is where you're eating from. Yeah. It's disgusting. So this is like a big prison of suffering. You can feel the energy in here, just sad, separated families, and despair, and there's just no hope in here. They look really sad, don't they? Like in there, you yeah, see that they look... Like taking all their life, or squeeze them. Sucking the life out of them. Everything, they squeeze everything. Mm. From their soul, from their body. Their body. Their emotion, their children, everything. Yeah, so the, the girl behind us, she's looking really thin. And like, just what happens is they just suck all the nutrients out of them through the milk, suck the absolute life out of them to look like a bony mess like this lady behind us. It's just, see the hip bones just protruding out there. And on the floor here, it's just their waist. Everybody's not okay. Yeah. They are very young. Very young. They're already sick and thin yeah. and not feel good. Yeah. And they squeeze, like I told you, told you before, they squeeze their life. Yeah. They squeeze everything from them. Yeah. Okay, so this is the milking parlor. This is where they're hooked up with the suckers and they suck the milk out of them. Down here, you can see the milk coming out. They're essentially milk machines, aren't they? So. So as you can see all of her legs, there's feces all over her. Feces all over her hooves, feces all over her legs, feces all under here, all under here, all feces. So on the udder, there's also feces. And this is how you get feces in the milk because there's feces all over the animals. So much uh, suffering here. So she comes from the dairy industry and she's blind. She was rescued, yeah? She was so skinny that all her bones were out. Size. Oh no. So she didn't wait much. So if they would sell her to the meat industry, they wouldn't get a penny. So at 14 months old, she came here and she couldn't see. But see, there is something called there that you can't see anything because you had trauma. And no. in the dairy farm, uh, they are all traumatized because they are being separated, separated from the yeah. mom and they hear the moms and they are yeah. crying. Okay, now we move on to dairy. Dairy, milk. You know, milk, cheese, that stuff that they put in everything. They put over everything, yogurt, ice cream. Let's think for a second what milk is because I never thought about this. So, I never thought that cows have to be pregnant to produce milk. They have to either be pregnant or have had a child to produce milk, just like us. I thought, this is going to sound pretty silly, but some people might think the same thing. I thought cows just produced milk by themselves. I thought that's what they were here for. They just, they just produced milk. No, there's a process. There is a process. After her child is born, within one, or, one to three days, her child is stolen from her. Across the board, every dairy, every dairy farm, you take me right now to the most humane dairy farm in Israel, the think green, green grass, and they take all of their children off of these cows. All right, so in here we have the two calves here, and they've been taken from their mothers over here. 
put in this crate, they'll be wheeled out somewhere, they'll be taken to isolation and they'll be separated. Over here you can hear the mothers bellowing out for their children. Um, it's very sad, very sad. Look at look their little faces. Still wet. They're still wet. They're only they're only newborns. The cow will bellow out for days. It's called pining. They pine out for their child, and their children are only sometimes 50 meters away, very close, and they can hear each other screaming for each other. And they connect to the story, to the mother yeah. that they take her child, yeah. and she's crying and. and yelling, yeah. where's my child, and you see, after we're gonna see yeah. the little babies, the little that babies. they are alone on the you know, metal yeah. uh, cages, yeah. and a lot of them dies also, 10% in Israel dies on the cages, wow. on the little babies, wow. because they don't have the, their mother milk, yeah. uh, they don't have the good care. Okay, so behind us here we have the solitary confinement for the baby calves, bobby calves that are taken from their mothers, they're all pining out. The mothers over there are pining for the babies. The babies are pining back for their mothers. Now, these little prison cells are so small that they can hardly turn around in there. So if you think of a prison, the cells, you can walk around, you can come down off the bunk, you can go to your toilet. Um, these little calves, little babies, are in these little cages, small. They need their mother at this time. They're supposed to be suckling from their mother. And this is how they're treated, this is how they're kept. All dairy farms across the board, not just in Israel, all dairy farms take children away from mothers just so we can take the milk that was meant for them. If you look at these little angels, they look like little puppy dogs, little scared, innocent eyes, kept in prisons so we can have a piece of cheese. See, and people like to talk about injustice, you know, Injustice over here, injustice to humans over here. Look at this. This is injustice. Innocent children kept in cages away from their mothers. They'll all be killed. Eventually they'll all be killed for nothing, for no good reason. No good reason. A lot of people become vegan because they said it's gross, first of all, because they shitting on themselves. Yeah. They look terrible. Yeah. And they don't want to take part of this. No. It's terrible. It's like, uh, it's the closest thing to slavery I've seen. It's you know? Slavery. It's yeah, it's, of course it's slavery. Yeah. The conditions in here look pretty horrific, but do you think there's a humane way to do this? It, it, it's funny joke. You yeah, know, it's a joke. To isn't it? funny, ra uh, you know, humane rape, yeah. humane slaughter. There is no thing like this. You know, people drive in the road of, roads of Israel and see the animals on the side of the, you know, free, like yeah. free, but they don't really free. But still, it's just 1% from all the animals in the yeah. industry. Most of the 99% on these farms, these farms, it's very crowded, a lot of shit, a lot of disease, and a lot, a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of suffering. A very, very sad place in, the, in a dairy farm. If anyone here has been in, in a dairy farm, you know what I mean. Horrible place, full of sadness, full of sadness. Yeah, so you can understand how easily they get these mastitis infections on the udder when they're always laying in their own feces. And um, they're getting milked with, you know, crap all over their, their teat and their udder. And this is going into the milks, getting sucked out with the parson. Like, oh, it's a disgusting place, like dairy products. I couldn't think of anything more disgusting 